Hello everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going through a new MIDI Fighter encoders package. Uh, the idea being that you can use a MIDI Fighter Twister unit as encoders for MA2 on PC. Um, I've seen some other products out there that will allow you to emulate encoder twists, but what I've noticed from the ones that I've seen are that instead of actually emulating uh, encoders, they're sending commands that say, basically like pan plus one, pan minus one, uh, which will get a job done, but it doesn't allow you to do things like using your align functions, uh, clicking on the encoders. Um, it's mostly the align functions that are kind of the, the killer for that, uh, as well as respecting the coarseness that you have selected for a certain attribute. Um, so what this does is it takes MIDI fighter CC commands, uh, sends them to Bohm, so you do need a Bohm license to use this, uh, and then Bohm will translate, translate that into MIDI notes, sends that to MA on PC. MA on PC, uh, for, there's a plugin that will install MIDI remotes for you, and then those installed MIDI remotes will trigger Lua commands that will emulate the encoder twists. All right, so just to demonstrate what all of that means, I've got uh, just a show file pulled up to demonstrate some of the concepts behind that. So. If I click on this mid-stage group, I will roll it up and I'll explain what the other encoders mean in a minute here. Um, if I grab my tilt and tilt them all out, we can see they are moving as expected. Compan left, compan right, all that is great, good to go. Um, if I want to reset to zero, I can click on it like I would an actual encoder, set it to zero. We've got that reset to zero. Um, as with a command wing or a physical console, if I press and spin, our resolution is, I guess, dropped. Uh, it, coarser motion is activated. Uh, so we'll reset that again. And then if I enable an align function, so we'll align out, we see that everything is moving as expected with align. Uh, if I hit align one more time for the opposite align function, we can make the same thing happen with tilt here. So we can see that the encoders are respecting the align functions. Uh, I've already showed you that they will respect clicking as well. Um, so let me go through some of the rest of the encoders and then, well, go from there. Um, so the pink encoder over here is a emulating the dimmer wheel. So that way you always, just like on a, on a desk, you always have access to your dimmer attribute without having to switch to something. So the pink encoder is for dimmer. And then I couldn't make it figure out, uh, make it identify which screen has current focus. So each screen gets its own encoder uh, for spinning. So I've got the orange ones, they're probably not going to show up too great in the video part of it, but uh, the orange ones are set up as the screens are arranged on an MA2 full size. So screen one, screen two, screen three, and four. And then screen five is the left red one, screen six is the right red one. So left external, right external was the idea. Um, but just to show you all of those in action, we've got screen one navigating up and down, screen two navigating up and down, screen three. And if I click and spin, we will get sideways motion, same as we would on a console. Uh, and if I just click on something, it emulates the click. Uh, moving on to screen four, we have our motion here, uh, screen five, and screen six. So just to show you that all those things are working. Uh, so just quick recap, attribute encoders, dimmer, screens. Um, so that's the setup. That is all of what it does. Uh, so next up, I'm going to move into um, how it is all set up. Alrighty, so let's get into the setup of this. Um, again, as a reminder, if I wasn't clear about it previously, you do need your own license, a Bohm MIDI translator for the setup to work. Uh, it's like 60 euro, you can get it at the website of uh, Bohm.com, that's B-O-M-E.com. Um, super handy just for the MIDI routing capabilities alone, but the MIDI translation options, the ability to convert other types of communication into MIDI are super handy. I think Nine Inch Nails ha had been using it out live last I'd heard with Jason Buckley, I want to say, is that LD? Um, so super, super handy software. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, so you'll need that 
to make this happen is the bottom line of that. So we're going to go in order of the signal flow, which means we're going to start from the MIDI fighter utility app. Um, in order to use it, we have to make sure Bohm is closed because the MIDI fighter can only be claimed by one application at a time. So we're going to close out Bohm. I'm going to open up MIDI fighter utility app. Let's bring that over here. Minimize this guy for now. Okay, so here's our configuration app. Uh, I've already got this file loaded up. Uh, if it's your first time opening it up, just make sure that you've updated your firmware on it. Uh, so I'm going to go to import settings from the menu here. We're going to import uh, at the time of this video, it is version 132. So I'm going to open up uh, version 132 of the configuration, which loads this up. Uh, if you're trying to merge with another setting or with another uh, MIDI fighter configuration, you are going to have to manually implement that. Um, so just to cover in broad strokes what you'll have to look at. Uh, MIDI channel number is 11 on all of these. Uh, the switch and encoder MIDI numbers change from each to the next and they are identical uh, within an encoder. So switch number matches an en encoder number. <clears throat> um, indicator type doesn't matter. Super knob doesn't matter. Um, encoder MIDI type is the 3FH41H option, <clears throat> which is just continual control. Uh, and that's pretty much all you really need to know on that. Uh, but if you are not trying to merge it into anything else, you just load it and say send to MIDI fighter and that's it. So once that's done, we can close up the MIDI fighter utility app and we can move into the BOM setup. Alrighty, so next part is the BOM setup. So if this is the only thing you're using with BOM, all you have to do for getting the translator in is go to file, open, and then import the, the BMTP file that is provided with the download, which is what's open right now. Uh, if you're trying to merge with an existing BOM setup, I'm gonna get into that at the end of this section. That's a little more involved because there isn't an integrated uh, import function in BOM. So we have to do a little bit of a workaround for that, but it's not too bad. Um, but first, before I get into all that, when you import this, I can almost guarantee it is not going to work immediately because you will have to handle your routing. So up in your MIDI ports, uh, you have to make sure that two ports are enabled. Uh, the most important one is the MIDI fighter itself. So if I scroll down here and I've got a lot of crap in this in on my computer in general, um, we have the MIDI fighter twister under MIDI input. Again, your routing, your port options are under the little MIDI port. Just make sure that's turned on. Uh, as far as output, uh, make sure you have MIDI virtual ports enabled. If you don't, that is under MIDI and virtual MIDI ports. I have mine set up to use six of them. Um, I don't think I actually use all six. Um, use however many you need. You only really need one for this. Um, but those are super handy just for internal MIDI routing. Uh, so that gets built. Uh, make sure you have at least one of those virtual MIDI ports enabled and they like to rename themselves. Um, that's probably something stupid I did. But anyways, make sure it's enabled. The next thing is go into your translator. <clears throat> um, in incoming, I do have it set to only receive from the MIDI fighter twister. So make sure that you have selected that because it might get deselected when it doesn't see the exact same device as an option. So under the specific ports in incoming, which is inside of your translator, uh, just make sure that MIDI Fighter's Twister is selected. As far as outgoing, it is set up to go to project slash preset default ports, and the preset is built to go to project default ports. So once you have enabled the virtual output over here that you're going to be using to uh, send to MA, you should be good to go. So again, the overview of that is once the file is in, make sure that MIDI Fighter Twister is set up for input and that at least one uh, virtual MIDI port is set up for output. And then in the translator, only in incoming, make sure that you have set it up to listen only to the MIDI fighter twister, uh, however it's recognized on your computer. After that, all the rest of the defaults should work as expected. Uh, if there are any issues, you can obviously contact me about whatever's going on. Now, to get into the part of how to merge into an existing file. 
So if I want to take this information and merge it into an existing bone file, since there is no um, built-in function for this, we have to manually do it by editing the BMTP file itself, which is just a text file. So what I'm going to merge it into is, oh, it looks like I already did it earlier. I'm going to merge it into this guy, which is my home version of this setup. It just includes some stuff for my audio interface. Uh, so lost my thought for a second. Um, to merge it into this, we are going to go into our file explorer and I'm going to open our, the file that we're, use, that we're trying to take the information from in a text editor. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is somewhere is open with, I've probably passed it twice, there we go, as well as the file we're merging into. We're going to open this, screw it, I can just do this. All right. So in the file that we're copying from, which is going to be the provided download, provided in the download, we're going to copy everything starting from the square brackets around preset.0 to just before project in square brackets. We're going to copy that. And that so that is all of our preset that's being used. We go into the file we're merging it into, and we're going to go right above where it says project. We're going to go to the beginning of that line, create some space, and we're going to paste everything we just copied. Following that, the only thing we have to do is change our preset number. Because it is assumed if you're merging into something, there are presets, otherwise you're merging into an empty file. Um, so we go up to, we look at whatever our last preset number was. So in this case, it is dot one. So we are going to change dot zero over here to dot two to make it the next preset in line. And that's it. So I'm going to save this as an edited version. I'm going to close out. And now when I go back to Bohm, if I open our edited version, we see that that extra preset has been added and it does indeed have our translator in it with all the settings that we previously had specified. So that will be how you merge in uh, to an existing Bohm file uh, with the content that is used to make the MIDI fighter twister work for this. Uh, next section, we're going to get into setting it up for MA. Alrighty, so back in the MA side, we just have to set up our routing from Bohm and install the remotes and we will be good to go. So on screen one is where we can access our uh, remote settings. So screen one, button in the top left, we go to options and under MIDI, we can select our MIDI in device. Uh, in Bohm, I have set up Bohm MIDI Translator 1 or Virtual Out 1 as my one of my outputs. So I will be listening to that. So that will show up as BMT1 in my MIDI devices, of which I have many. Um, and that's it as far as our routing setup goes. So we can close that up. And then we install the encoder or the remotes for the encoders. So right now, if I spin any of these, we will see nothing is happening. Um, because there are no, there's nothing associated with those MIDI notes. Uh, if I go into MIDI remotes here, we can see that it's receiving stuff, but there is nothing to connect it. So in our plugin pool, I've got this imported already. Uh, if you don't just go in, import, find wherever you have stored it and you can import it. Um, import that. We don't have to worry about anything on the settings for this part. Uh, we click it. It will inform us that if an existing installation is already present, it will wipe it out. Uh, we say OK, and then it will tell us that it is successfully completed. So if I go back into my remote inputs and go to MIDI remotes, we will see that we have, I think it's like 42 remotes uh, that have come in. Uh, the only things to really note on this is first off, don't edit the info field. This is what allows the plugin to detect if these remotes are associated with this uh, installation with this plugin set. Uh, and the other thing is everything is running through channel 11. That is the way I've set it up through the MIDI fighter to Bohm to MA, um, just kind of a number that was out of the way for me. If you need to change it, you can edit it in Bohm and you can edit it here in one move. Um, so just so you're aware of that. So that's it for this part of it. And now we should see that on screen four here, if I give this a spin, that everything is working the way we expected it to go. Um, Besides that, uh, there are some settings in the user config of this. Uh, it's not really much. Um, I found that for controlling attributes that 
a command of an, an encoder movement of one was a little bit too slow. Um, so I set up some multipliers to use with each type of encoder should you want to change how responsive they are basically. Uh, so the attribute encoders are set up to multiply whatever command is provided by two. Um, dimmer set to one, screen rotate set to one. Um, unfortunately, these do have to be whole numbers because I would like the screen rotate to go down a little bit um, or the, the screen resolution, but uh, I do not have a way to do that. Um, outside of that, uh, that's pretty much it. There is no outside of that. That is the whole plugin. That is start to finish uh, setup of this thing. So that should cover everything regarding the setup. You can find this for download at my website, geopadesigns.com. Links in the description, uh, as well as the Facebook page. You can subscribe on here. You probably know how social media works. Um, let me know if you guys are using it. I just love seeing shots of these things. So if you guys have any, send them my way. Um, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to contact me. Um, that's it. Happy programming in isolation, everybody.